So we'll come back to uh, day four. What we're going to do uh, is load up the project from last time, our example project. So the example project, you can use either your project from your flash drive or wherever you have it, or you can use my project, which is in the network, in the Z drive. Uh, uh, Campus Android 2, and there's a project in there called Example 2014-1014. This was last uh, Tuesday's work. So what you want to do, if you're going to use my project, you can copy it to the desktop, and then I'm going to change its name to the 16th. So my project is on the desktop. To get it into Eclipse, we're going to do what we did previously about importing file import. Um, we can't just open the project because Eclipse doesn't know all of the details of the project that way. So I've got it on the desktop, I'm in Eclipse, and I'll go to File, Import. We did this when we wanted to import or actually we did file new application project. But we're going to do import because as I was saying last time, there's two ways to do it and there's probably nuances that are different, but I've done them both ways and I don't seem to see a difference. I'm sure the documentation can tell us otherwise, but I'm going to do file import. And the screen comes up like this. Where you, what do you want to import? An Android project from existing code. Same thing as the other screen, although the other screen gives you a couple more options that we don't need. So I did import Android, existing Android code into Workspace. Next. And then here is where we select the project. Now, last time when we, when we loaded up the PhoneGap template, I said, remember to turn on copy project into workspace because that's going to make a copy of the template. It's going to leave the template alone and work with this new project. And that was good. Here now, you need to decide, but I'll tell you my opinion, about if you want to turn this on today because we're going to continue to work on our project, the project that is on my desktop. If I select copy project into workspace, it'll leave that one alone and put a new copy in the workspace. So I'll have two copies of the same project and you might get confused which is the one I'm working with, the one in the lab folder, the one in the desktop. So I'm gonna leave this off because I'm going to work directly with my copy on the desktop. A project does not need to be in the workspace in order for us to work with it. I'm going to leave mine on the desktop and work with it there. That way, when I go home, it's on the desktop. I will just drag it to my flash drive. Does that make sense why you may or may not turn that off? Turn that on. So I'm going to browse, and on the desktop or your flash drive, I've got my example project folder. You want to click on the top level of the folder, the name of the folder right there, and click OK. And just to confirm it's going to open, it's going to load up the example project from the desktop. And as I said, you can decide to copy it to Workspace or not. I will not. Finish. Wait a moment and what should happen is then your project loads up in the Package Explorer, just like last time. Did that work for everyone? Question. What's the difference between a package and a project? Where are you looking at specifically where it says package? In the, um, the, the left-hand side of the Eclipse Windows. Package, package Explorer? Package Explorer, but then there's, there's also a project. If you do the, you think the window is showing just a new, there's also a project explorer. I don't know. I haven't worked with the Project Explorer. I've always just worked with the Package Explorer, which was the default. And uh, there's probably some nuance that is different here. The icon, at least. I'll make a note to look that up. What's the difference between Package Explorer and Project?
Right, you need some help right there? Are we ready to go? So now our project should be loaded into uh, into Eclipse. Um, I've noticed that if you try to run a project day to day on your real device, sometimes you get a you get a problem that it's trying to load the project on top of the existing project in your real device. It doesn't matter on our virtual device because it resets every time we come in. But I recommend, and it seems to help to uninstall the example app from the real device uh, before we then start to run new versions of it. So, however your device is, I don't know how you install on your, uninstall on yours, but I'm going to go to my apps screen. I'm going to scroll over. There's my example. I'm going to tap and hold it, and I've got... Mine's tricky because it, I've got app info and remove, but remove doesn't uninstall it. Uninstalling it is found under app info. There's an uninstall. So depending on your device, uninstall your example app from last time, from your real device. If you haven't done so already, you should create a run configuration now that we've got a project to work with. And so... Um, the big idea that we'll get into now is getting our project from last month into our current project. So what we've got is our example template from PhoneGap, and we want to uh, bring in our project from last month. So the, the thing that we'll do is basically drag the contents of the previous project into the current project with a bunch of nuances. So here's what we'll do. I've got a copy. Did I put the copy? Let me check. I've got a copy of last month's project. If you didn't take the class last month, you want to get a copy of this. And if you did take the, the class last month, you might still want it, just in case, so that you can start from the same point that I'm starting. So copy to the desktop first. Copy to the desktop the project. It's in my network folder, or if you've got it on your flash drive or whatever copy. So I'm going to copy mobile website start to the desktop. Now, uh, the mobile website start project is where we ended with last month. And inside of it, of course, it's got all of the files that made up the project. And um, the, there's an index file in there, which conflicts with the index file that already exists in Eclipse. So what I will do in Eclipse is um, rename the index file to something else so that we don't lose it. And then we'll drag in the, the project file. So first step, back to Eclipse. And I forget, where is the index file in our example project? Assets, Assets folder and then www folder. That's the website. So we've got in uh, an index HTML file. And I don't want to delete it. I, I just want to rename it so it's a backup copy. So what you can do is you can select it, File menu, Rename. That one's a simple rename. It's not a refactor like we've done previously. So you want to... I don't believe it shows up in the right click for some reason. It did for me. Oh, it did? Maybe not on Windows. So we're going to rename the index file that comes with PhoneGap. So select it, File menu, rename, and we will call it Old Index.
The reason I'm doing that is because there's some code that it has that I want to copy from here into my into my project, my my web app project. And I don't want to lose that file. So simply renaming it old index will not appear anywhere in our app because there's no reference to it, is there? So that's what we need to do there. And then is a, the next matter is to do some drag and drop. I've got both my windows open here. On the left side is the window that includes the, the web app. And on the right side is Eclipse. And it's just a matter of dragging these, all of these files from this window and dropping them into the WW folder of Eclipse. So watch me first, because you're going to get a pop-up. I'm going to select all my files here and just drag from the desktop into WW. And again, be careful. I'm dragging the contents of the project inside the folder of mobile website start. Don't drag the whole mobile website start folder into your project because then your project is in a subfolder. You want the contents of mobile website start. You want to drag all of those into WW folder. Eclipse will say, would you like to copy these files, link to these files, or do something else? You want to copy these files. You want to take the originals and copy them into our current project. Linking to them wouldn't work because if I removed it from the desktop, the link would be broken and the project would no longer work. So copy files and folders. So you should see a bunch of new files in that WW folder. Did everyone do that? Anyone need some help? Okay, so we've got our whole project in there. There's the index file. So if we were to run the project, there's still a few things to do. But I'm going to run the project in whatever device you have. So I'm going to run the project in um, my AVD. And there's my project loaded up in loaded up in my AVD. It's an app. It's not a website. If you go to the apps screen, you'll see it installed there. So run it and see if you get the result there. So now 
Thank you. 
All right, so um, let's move on now. So um, that's uh, just a, a little quick view that there's our project that we did last month, and now it's loading up as an actual app. Here it is in my virtual device, and it's still called example instead of the name of the project that I want. We can deal with that later, but it's in there. It's in the virtual device now, and then I'll also run it on my real device so that I can see it there. That's why we make these run configurations so that you can have a quick launch for your AVD and a quick launch for your for your um, real device. So I've loaded it. I've got it loaded up in my real device. I notice the colors are not the same for some reason. You mean that it doesn't recognize the gradients? Yeah, because I my phone is also an LG and it doesn't do the gradients on Tuesday. Okay, that's uh, yeah. We probably have the version of the gradients that was not compatible with the device. So that's why we might beta test it, and I'm going to go from screen to screen. It seems to work. Art calendar. That little thing swipes over. Cool. Tabs open up. I go from screen to screen. Things slide. I mine feels like they everything swipes around pretty well, and I've got an Android 4.1. I think the pop-up looks good. I'm going to click the customize.
All right, so there's, it seems to be working there. Um, what we're going to do now then is um, we, we basically drop the project in there into our project, but uh, it's not really ready yet. We're inside of the Cordova shell, but it doesn't know that we're going to do uh, Cordova or PhoneGap stuff with it. That's why we, um, that's why we, we kept the old index. So we'll go back to Eclipse. And now what our folder has in here are all of the project files. So we want to edit index. If you've got the plugin installed, you can simply double click it. You know you have the plugin installed when these icons have like text, color coded text. If your icons do not have that, don't double click. You didn't install the plugin. You want to right click open with text editor or HTML editor if you install the plugin. So edit your index file. This is the index file from last month. And then you also want to edit the old index file, the one from Tuesday. So I've got both index files opened. We named one old and one index, but here's the thing, this is a good question that came up earlier. If I've got multiple projects open and multiple files open and multiple index files open, how do I know which is which from the tab? You can hover your mouse over the tab and, it'll, and wait a moment and then it'll tell you that's from your example project. Hover over that one, that might be from your project too. You know, when you hover over it, tell, it gives you a quick view about which project it's coming from. Turn on your uh, line numbers. And so the old index has a couple of lines that we want that our new index doesn't. Um, so remember, you can also put these things side by side, and that's going to be helpful for me at the moment. I'm going to drag these tabs over and manipulate my screen so I can get as much on screen as possible. You guys have nice big monitors. You can you can change your, your screens pretty well. I've got to fight for it a little bit, so I'm going to close my package explorer. You don't have to because you probably have the space. But I'm going to close the package explorer and that um, the outline on the right side. There we go. Now I can see things a little better. You drag it. Yes. Just click and drag to the right and eventually it'll snap. Um, so what I need to do, notice, uh, so my new index on the left, my old index on the right. My new index has the meta car set, just like old index. Uh, but what's missing on the new index are the lines 23 and 24. Uh, 24 in the old index is similar to line 5 on the new index, except it's a little short. It's missing a couple of lines there. So I'm going to replace that one. On the new index, line 5, I'm going to delete it. It's the line that has the viewport and a couple of parameters for the viewport. I'm going to remove that from the new index. From the old index, I'm going to copy lines 23 and 24 and paste them where I remove the old, uh, the new one. Puts the detection in the That's right. So meta name format detection and meta name viewport. Copy those from the old index to the new index. Then we have a bunch of lines we don't need anymore. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We don't need those lines anymore because those were lines 7 and 8 were Apple specific bits of meta tags that really only work for web apps. This is no longer a web app, it's, a, it's an app being installed on a device, so we don't need lines 7 and 8. 9, 10, 11, we don't need those because those were fave icons. There's no more fave icons in this. Did you notice in your device it's still showing the Cordova mascot icon? It's not, a, it's not obeying the fave icon that we created um, last month because these lines don't make sense. So remove lines 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. No need to comment them out, they just don't 
work. They don't matter in this version of the app. I'm going to remove them. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm going to leave that space there. So there's an empty space on seven, just for aesthetics. And then line eight is the title. That's fine. It can be empty. Now, line 25 of the old index is a reference to the CSS file that came with PhoneGap. We don't need it. We're not going to use its style. We're going to use the style that we created on the previous class. So I'm going to ignore line 25 in the old index, their version of the index CSS, because we've got our own version on line 13 of the new index. Everything else that we've got here we don't uh, really need except for line 36 of the old index. That's one of the most important lines. Remember I mentioned that. Line 36 is a reference to the Cordova JavaScript library that allows us to do all of this cool stuff we're going to do today, such as take a photo with our app. So select line 36. I'm going to put it in this in in the same area that you know I'm going to put it in the at the top actually because I want to use those abilities before the project renders. Uh, so copy line 36 and we will paste this on line mm, 18. Line 18. There's a reference to jQuery, jQuery Mobile and then our Codica extra features. I'm going to paste this on line 18. And because it bothers me, this is optional. You don't have to do it. We're running HTML5. I'm going to remove the type here, where it's a script type, text JavaScript. Uh, it's JavaScript. We're running HTML5. We're cool. We don't need that. So I'm going to remove that. And now that looks nice and organized. Save that. Oops, when I zoomed out, I pressed the star. All right. So you just copied the 36 line. Did I make any other changes, class? I mean, other than removing some of the lines. I removed the part that said type equals text. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So those are the lines that I updated. And um, if you save it and run it, uh, you, you probably shouldn't see any difference in the app. But now we, we've, we've activated the features of, of Cordova. Now here's a keyboard shortcut for you. Uh, every time you want to run your project, you're probably moving your mouse way up here and then clicking the button and clicking that and going through it. Here's a keyboard shortcut. If your hands are already near the keyboard, you can activate the very last run configuration on the keyboard by pressing Control F11. So Control F11 will run my last configuration which in my case was my LG. And that way I don't have to move my hand up to that and click it to do two clicks. I just do one quick keyboard shortcut, and then my project loads up right there. And it even remembers my name. Welcome, Victor.
Okay, so we've got some things that we want to do. Um, we've, we want to set up our onDeviceReady function um, so that we have so that we're sure that we have access to the APIs, meaning we have the ability to use phone gap specific code. We may or may not, but we want to make sure that we do once we um, once we load up our project. So uh, we'll go back to the the documentation. We'll go back to PhoneGap.com, and what I want to do is uh, look at a bit of documentation because if you notice on on the art screen, we've got a link. Well, actually, I just I forgot to say something. This always happens to, to people. Uh, a, a quick thing here, when we're using our project, uh, when, we're, when we're running our project in the emulator, uh, remember, this is acting like, a, like, a, like an Android device, so the scroll wheel will not work. If you're trying to scroll up and down on the screen, the scroll wheel will not work on the virtual device. It's an Android device. It doesn't know what a scroll wheel is. So you're going to click and hold and drag up or down. So when you want to scroll just like this real device here, when I'm scrolling up or down with my finger, what do I do? I tap it and I drag it and I go up and down. Well, on the virtual device, you want to click it and hold it and drag it up and down. Just a quick thing, because people people sometimes ask me that. I, I can't, my, it, my, my project is cut off. How do I see the rest of it? Well, you scroll it up, click and drag to go up. So what we've got is uh, SDCE catalog. If you click that, that uh, the theory of that is that it's supposed to open a website, which it did, but very, very oddly, because this is inherited from a website. And on a website, we have multiple tabs, right? We've got target blank to open an extra tab. Here, we're in an app. We want to load an external website. And it did something weird. It suddenly, like, what am, what am I even looking at here? Am I still in my app? It's confusing. It's going to confuse your users. So what we're going to do is activate the in-app browser. One of the easiest things we can start off with in, in Cordova, in PhoneGap, is load an external website but within my app. So show me an external website because this is not acceptable. Uh, I can press back and I guess it takes me back but it doesn't feel like, I'm st like I was still in my app. So I want to use something called the in-app browser, and that's going to be phone gap specific code. What we're going to write makes no sense when we were doing our class last month. We weren't working on an app yet. So in order for us to understand how that works, let's open up a web browser. Open up your favorite web browser, and we'll go to phonegap.com. PhoneGap.com, go to the Developer tab, and then go to Docs. Developer Docs. And remember, we need to switch over to the version of the code that we're working with at the moment. It tells us, here's the documentation for 3.5. We're not running 3.5. What are we running again? 2.9.0. So select on the very top right, scroll down to 2.9.0, not release candidate 1, 2.9.0. And um, we're going to look at the documentation for in-app browser on the third column near the bottom. In-app browser, launch URLs in another in-app browser instance. So this is going to load up an external website in a nice handy looking, in a nice looking um, 
screen with back and forward buttons, with a close button, etc. When you click close, it takes you back to your main app. It feels like you're still using your app. So let's look at the documentation for in-app browser. The in-app browser is a web browser that displays in the app when calling window.open. So look, look at this very basic example. var creates a variable, ref equals window.open, and then a few parameters here. The website, comma, how do we open it, comma, and location. Um, the documentation explains what each of those means. And as we scroll down, we've got something about permissions. Uh, I'll get back to what permissions are a little later. Add event listener. So I'm going to scroll down. Quick example, full example. All right, so under the full example, we've got a, a few things we want here. We want to um, we want to see they're not li they're not numbered. But notice there's a spot here that says "Wait for device API libraries to load." We we need that. We need that line. Document .add event listener. Let's select that whole line and copy it. Document .add event listener. Device ready on device ready false. So um, copy that line. And we're going to go back to Eclipse. And we'll put and that's a little bit of JavaScript. So we need to put that. I'm going to close my old index. Uh, we don't need it anymore. Since it's JavaScript, I'm going to put it in my um, Uh, cor uh, Codica Extra JS right here. Remember we've got Codica Extra CSS and Codica Extra JS. These are our, our little bits of uh, code that are unique to our app. So we're going to open Cordova .j, uh, Codica .ext.js. You want to right click it, open with text editor. This is what we did last month. I'm going to put this line of code on line 2. I'm going to make myself some space at the top. After the put your custom code here, I press enter a couple of times. I'm going to paste. All right, so what this line is saying is document.addEventListener. To the document itself, we've added an event listener, which means it's waiting for something. There are many types of events that we can deal with, like a click of a button, the loading of a page, etc. In this one, we're dealing with one called device ready. Why? Because that's the documentation. That's what the documentation of uh, PhoneGap tells us. It's one of the most basic things we should we should look out for. If we do get a device ready, then we should be pretty safe in assuming that anything we write related to PhoneGap should work. So, on device, if we do get device ready, then we're going to run the on device ready function. Return false. Uh, so, after that, that we've pasted, make a new line. And we'll create, 
we'll define what that function on device ready is. So we'll write function on device ready. Open close parentheses, space, open curly brace, couple of enters, close curly brace, semicolon. And just as a proof that this is working, I'm going to make a simple alert pop-up box. We should really do this as a uh, as, as outputting to the console, and we will after the break, but I want to just make a big pop-up here that says device ready. So this is what we have so far. Uh, make sure you save all files. If you are working with Index and Kodika and you have not saved, you should get into the habit of clicking the Save All button right there. Save All, and then run it. I'm running it on my real device, and then I'll run it on my virtual device. What's the keyboard shortcut again for your quick launch? Control F11. We don't have a something key on our keyboards yet. So we want to run it, and what should happen, I'll run it on my virtual device here. A pop-up happens right at the beginning. Alert, device ready. Well, what's happening there is, again, there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes. One of the things that happens is that once the device is ready for you to use it, the event is fired of device ready. We've captured that with document add event listener. It's saying, be on the lookout for anything called device ready. Once it happens, then run the function on device ready. What is on device ready? A simple pop-up that says device is ready. Click OK and the device is ready. We need to do something like that on all of our projects to make sure that we are able to use PhoneGap. If this never pops up, then we have to figure out what the problem is because our device is not firing the event ready. Um, is not firing the device ready event. It did for me on my real and virtual devices. Raise your hand if it worked for you as well. Good. And it's a good time for a break, but any general questions? Yes? Oh, okay. Let me see that actually. So, you, so you're saying get directions, and then you do the thing, and then you go back, and it fires it again. Okay, it's, it's going to be firing it often, because what we did was we went from one file to another file. Remember, the directions is DIRHTML. When we came back, it fires it again, and therefore it makes a pop-up happen. Now, obviously, it makes it pop-up every time we come back, but this is just a proof of concept that, it's, that we're capturing that device. We're not going to make something pop-up like that every time. But we're just seeing stuff happens even when we never knew it was happening. So this is normal. Any other general questions? All right, let's uh, take a break. Uh, it's uh, just about 7.05. We'll take 10 minutes, 7.15. And when we come back, uh, we'll, we'll keep going. So if you didn't quite get things working, get them working during the break, and we'll go on. I'll be with you one moment.